Hey everyone. Um, so today I'll be talking to you about interactive experiences with Nuxt content. So we're all familiar with, or most of us are familiar with Nuxt content in that it's a great way to create static experiences, blogs, um, all that sort of, you know, marketing content, stuff like that. But with Markdown components, we can add in some really cool interactive stuff. And so I want to show that to you right now. Um, I did have a, a slide in here about, um, you know, introducing myself, but I think that's been done a few times already. So I'll just skip over that. So I have been working on the Clean Components Toolkit. And as part of that, I wanted to add in quizzes. And so one interesting thing about this is that I didn't want to you know, use a regular component. I wanted to be able to write this in Markdown. And so I'll just take, take you through a quick demo uh, overview so you can see what kind of thing we're going to be building in this in this talk. So you know, we've got a basic quiz here. We've got some questions. We have some answers. We can select different things. I'll just select some randomly here. And well, this is not uh, looking good for me because there's clearly a bug here. Um, so I'll have to fix that. Um, but as you can see, we have these components. They tell you which ones we got right, which ones we got wrong, and should be showing the score at the end. Um, we'll, uh, we'll come back to that later. But what's interesting about this is that um, all of this quiz stuff is just a markdown file. And so the way that we write it out is using the markdown component syntax, where we can pass in some props here. We've got a question, we put in the answers. Then we have the next question and answers, and so on and so forth. But because it's markdown content or markdown components, I always, I always get, I always say it the wrong way. I don't know why. Markdown components is what MDC stands for. Because it is just markdown, we can do whatever we want. We can add in different uh, pieces of markdown. We can add in headers, and we can do all of that. So if I show you the beginning state of this demo that we'll be going through, you can see that we've got a bunch of different quizzes here on the left. And then we have got our, our header and some text. Because this is markdown, we can add in some italicized. We can do some formatting, whatever we want. And so this is what I really love about markdown components. Now, the neat thing that I want to show you here is that these components are contextually aware, meaning we can put them in wherever we want in our application, and they are aware of all of the other things that are going on in the application. Specifically, these quiz, these components here that we're putting in are all aware of each other. So we don't need to tell each component that, oh, this is, this is the first question, this is the second question, and we don't need to tell this quiz results component that these quizzes exist because they are contextually aware. So we are going to look at how to do that with these components here. So right now, these components here are not aware of each other. They're all showing one, and that's because they are all hard coded. So if we come over to our quiz component here, we can see that we've got some refs here and they're all just hard coded. We have an idea of one and we have some other things going on here. But the first thing that we want to do is obviously make these quiz questions aware of each other. And so in order to do that, we are going to use the data store pattern to create a global store of data that all of these quizzes, all these quiz components can 
can use to become aware of each other. So to do that, we will create a composable. So we'll go create a composables folder. And then inside of that, we'll create a use quiz file. Now, the first thing that we want to do is to create a singleton. So all that means is that we are creating um, a value that only exists once, no matter how many times we run this. So here, we'll put in an array of questions that we'll keep. And so the key with this one is that every single time we use this use quiz composable, we don't want to recreate this state. We want, we want each composable to reuse the existing global state. So that's why you have to put it outside of this composable function. So now we have this composable, but we need to actually do something with this state. And so in order to add all of the, the quizzes, the quiz questions to this state, we're not going to expose this questions array because we don't want um, just you know public access to this. We want to be able to control it so that we can um, uh, we can have our own logic wrapping around that. And so for us, we'll add in this method. I'm going to copy and paste this in here. And I'll just explain this for you here. We, What we're doing here is we're going to first randomize the answers because we want it to be you know, not so not so obvious every time. We want it to give it a little bit fresh every time you take the quiz, because um, otherwise it can be, you know, too easy to uh, to just flip your answers back and forth until you get it all right. And then the correct answer index to keep track of which one is correct. And in our case, we're just assuming that when we write the quizzes, that this first answer is always the correct answer. So in our logic here, we're reordering the answers. Then the key part here is that we will grab, we'll, we'll create a question object. And we're going to use an ID that takes the current number of questions that we have and increments it. So this is where our, our quiz questions are be, going to be aware of each other. Because when we add them, they are aware of this global state that we've created. Then we add in all the, the other data, and we're going to add in a selected value here so we can keep track of which value is selected. Then lastly, the function will add that to our array. And then we're going to return this, this object as well so that our component can have access to it. So in order for this to work, we need to actually return the method from or composable. And now that we've got this set up, we can come back to our quiz component here, and we can use this, this new composable that we have created. Just making sure I'm going to put in the right thing here, because technical difficulties abound this morning. All right, so we import this from our use quiz composable. And then from that, we can grab the ID, can grab selected, ordered answers, the correct answer index. And so we need to grab the question and the answers. And then obviously, we need to get rid of these guys here. We hit Save. And now we see that on the side here with our little demo here, all of these are incrementing correctly the way that they should. 
And what's great about this is that it's just Markdown again. So if we wanted to edit our quiz, we wanted to rearrange something, we can change that there. And now it auto updates. We don't have to worry about which, which answer is correct. We don't have to worry about the ID or anything like that. It just sort of happens magically, which is my favorite kind of code, as long as it does what you expect it to, of course. So that's just the first part. We also want to have this whole showing results thing work, because what's the point of doing a quiz if you can't tell it, how many you've gotten right and you know getting that feedback? So for right now, this quiz results component isn't hooked up to anything, and so we can't see anything. So the solution here is to take this show results and add it into our global state over here. So we pop this in here, some weird autocompletes happening. And then instead of passing it directly back here, what we can do is because we want to deal with the show results value on its own and not pass the whole state object here back as one thing, we sort of do this like, it's sort of like importing it into the composable. It's not, it's not really that, but it sort of feels like that to me. So we use this two refs uh, helper method that, that comes with view. And if we, we do it with state here. What happens is we're able to, we wrap everything inside of state in a ref, which allows us to pass around these individual values on their own without losing that reactivity. So we'll pull off the show results, sort of like, again, it just feels like an import to me. And so that's, that's the language I'm going to use. It's wrong, I know, but that's the way I feel about it. So we import it, and then we do this like export thing. So now we are not allowing access to our questions array because we're, we just want access to that array through this add question method. But we're going to allow full access to this show results value. Because it's just a, a Boolean flag, it's fine. We're going to toggle it back and forth. That, that, that doesn't matter. So. We go back to our quiz component here, and we're going to import this one as well. So we go with our show results there. And then the last piece is to go into our quiz results component. And here there is nothing. So we'll um, pull in the show results. And that's all that we need to point because we're not adding any questions from this. So that's that's it. You'll notice on the side here that these IDs keep incrementing. That's because of uh, hot reloading and stuff. Um, so we'll just refresh. Everything's good again. If we click on a bunch of questions now. We hit this button. Now it shows the results. It doesn't show the score yet, but it shows the results. And all of the different styling and everything is um, applied correctly based on you know, whether we've selected the right thing or not. And this works because it's communicating through that global store. So the final and last piece is to actually implement the score here. And so for that, it's um, not too complicated calculating the score of a quiz. We need a method to calculate the score, which is appropriately named calculate score. 
We're going to grab the number of correct answers, then get the total answers, and then return the percentage. So this method does not update our state. It does not do anything like that. It just looks at the state and returns the, the value here. The next thing that we do is that we want to add the score into our state. So we have act we have something to, to update. So we'll go right back up to the top here, pop that in, and we're almost there. We need a way to actually update the state now. So for us, we will add in a watcher and Unfortunately, I realized too late. I realized yesterday as I was practicing this talk again that this perhaps should have been a computed prop instead of, or a computed ref instead of a watcher. This is not really a good use case for side effects. Um, so that's uh, me resting my own code here. So this works but it is probably not the best way of doing it. So um, an example of do as I say and not as I do. So, you know, this is why refactoring exists and, you know, incremental improvement. So here it is. This is the code that we've got and uh, no code is perfect. So we'll just continue on. We have our watcher. It updates the score whenever we whenever we toggle this show results thing. So the last piece is that we actually need to return the score from this composable so that we can use it. So let's go back up here. We'll do the same thing that we did with show results. We'll pull the score off of our state. Then we'll return it here. Now, we can come back to this here, grab our score, and if we're lucky and the technology demo people are smiling upon us, then we can perhaps get a correct result here. And so, Funnily enough, I just happened to select all wrong answers here. However, if I change one of these answers, ah, see, I get one answer correct, 5% out of 20. That's a terrible grade, but you know, for randomly clicking on three things, that's uh, not too bad. And so this is an example of contextually aware components and implementing that using this data store pattern. And one of, the, one of the advantages of this data store pattern, which is covered in more detail in my upcoming Clean Components Toolkit, is that it doesn't matter where in the component tree or hierarchy your components are, you can just hook things up and it works beautifully. Um, getting close to running out of time here, but I want to point out one thing that you may have noticed. There is an issue with, uh, let me go up here. There's an issue with having global state like this, especially using Nuxt. And it's that that is the potential for cross request state pollution. Because this is global state, if this state is also on your server, it's global for everyone. So that means that you have multiple requests coming in. They're all going to share the same state, which is not going to end well for anyone. So in this case, to get around that, I have made these quiz components just client side only, just for simplicity here. However, you can use Pina and um, get around that instead by by doing that. So I just wanted to point that out because 
I'm pretty sure that someone would ask that question anyway. So that's my live demo and or the live coding part. And now is the last part. I've got about 30 seconds or so to plug my own things. And the last part here is about mastering Nuxt 3. If you want to learn Nuxt 3 and you know build full stack apps that that take advantage of it, it's the best the best thing. It's 30% off right now. I'm not going to say too much more about this. You've already heard me talk about it a few times now, I think, this morning or this evening or in the middle of the night, wherever you happen to be. So I'll just leave it there. I also have um, this new toolkit coming out, which covers different patterns, techniques, principles for building better components using state management like we saw in this talk. And you know, I've been working hard on this one for a long time, and I'm really excited for it. So if you're interested in that, um, if you want to find it, Google Clean Components Toolkit. Um, if you want to know more about it, when things are happening, if you want to find more, uh, find out more about me, you can go to my website, sign up for my newsletter, and follow me on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it these days. Yay. Thank you, Michael. And uh, also, yay for um, me not being the only one talking about like X Twitter, not knowing what to call it. Makes me feel better about it because I still want to call it Twitter. Ugh. But I think I'm going to stick with Twitter. <laughs> it just feels better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm excited that you're coming out with the new uh, – work as well. So I'm definitely going to have to check that out. Questions for you of, have you tried out Astro and uh, Astro content collections? And how does next Nuxt content compare? So I have not had a chance to try out Astro. Um, probably should. It seems like a lot of people are talking about it. Looks really, looks really interesting, but haven't had a chance. Sweet. And is it possible to change the default branch in Next Studio? I do not know. I have, again, haven't had a chance to uh, play with Next Studio at all. We're just giving you all like the hardest questions ever. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, can someone pair Next content with a UI like Netlify CMS? You know, three for three. Um, I I don't know the answer to this question. <laughs> We're like the worst. Okay, <laughs> let's let let's try question number four. You got two more. So okay. Yeah. Um, well, how about this? I'm going to take a break. And what is your favorite color? My favorite color would be blue. Okay. See, we got one. We got one. So I'm yeah. I'm feeling good about the rest of these. Is next content useful for SSR sites or only SSGs? So I actually, um, I'm using it for both. So my website, I have basically there's, it's split into two parts. I've got my blog website where I have all my articles and, and stuff like that. And that is server side generated for performance and, and all of that. But then my course platform side is, as I was showing, is all um, is all Nuxt content based. But because it's behind authentication, it's SSR, and so it's useful for for both. And I'm yeah, I'm using it for like just basic markdown pages, um, quiz things like I was showing, and also um, more elaborate like refactoring examples with with steps through all powered by next content and um so far it's been working great for me cool thank you and with uh the recent release of next studio in what scenarios would someone use next studio instead of next content 
Um, I don't know the answer to this question. My guess from, um, I haven't used Next Studio personally, so perhaps uh, someone else wants to answer this question later on. But my understanding is that Next Studio builds on top of Next content and makes it easier for teams and, um, and companies to collaborate together with Next content. Um, for myself, because I'm just one one dev, you know, working on my own, um, Markdown files are are great for me, and so I've I've stuck with that. But um, please correct me if I'm wrong, because there's a very good chance that that was a wrong answer. Uh, I, I mean, I feel like there's so many use cases that uh, so many of these were probably answers of it depends. It's the go-to answer for everything. It depends. Um, last question. Can you launch Nuxt in client only? Yeah, so I think this was one of the questions that I was um, trying to address at the end, at the end there where, um, yeah, using, using global state, you have to, um, with SSR, you have to be careful. And um, this is why Pina exists. Um, use state exists for this reason in um, in Nuxt, but um, it doesn't. You can't use use state outside of a composable like that. And so I haven't figured out how to get around that with just using use state. And so I think um, Pina or making those parts client side only are the, the best two options but I haven't um, fully explored that part. So I'm gonna be conservative there with my answer. Great, thank you so much, Michael. Like we, I know we went through you for a loop for some of them. Always excited about Mastery Next. Uh, that is, and the work you have coming out here soon. So if you could drop the link in the chat too, so that way people know where to go sure. look at uh, your new work as well. And thank you, Michael. All right, thank you.